Hi everybody, welcome to Space Junkie YouTube channel and as you see we have an interesting guest for you. For the first time we invited Felix Schlang who's the head of um, What About It channel. Felix, hello, welcome to our channel. It's a massive honor to have you with us here right now. Thanks for having me and thanks for the nice introduction. It's an honor to be here tonight. I'm looking forward to what we are going to talk. Did you get yeah, over lots of questions? Did you get over your jet lag already? It took me a good week, yeah, but now it's better. It's we, always when you, when you travel from west to east, it's even crazier. And, it is. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's one way easier and the other way is harder. As, yes. as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Um, all right. Um, we got a couple of questions for you because I think our channels have a lot in common and we have a lot of questions because you've seen some stuff where we haven't seen and we really want to know uh, how you feel about Starship and all these developments. But if you don't mind first, we will ask a couple of questions which related to you as a person because we want to know you you know, how you became, you know, the Felix Schlang from What About It. So, okay, so could you just tell us, um, so how you became and, and how you got interested into, in general, in space, space travel, and also in Starship? How did it came into view, to your horizon, basically? Um, okay, so I'm almost 42 years old. <laughs> So it's been some time that I've been interested in space. Okay. If I have to go all the way back, it would be um, me watching the Challenger catastrophe on, on TV. That was the first memorable thing that I can remember of. I was, I think, six years old back then. And that dragged me into what the heck is going on there, basically. People flying to space. That sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I first went into astronomy. I I didn't really... I mean, I watched uh, videos on online and stuff like that, but... For me, it was astronomy. I, I got telescopes and I started stargazing and uh, found my passion in that. Um, and besides, I always tried to work in the media business. So I worked at radio stations, I worked at TV stations, I worked at book publishers, everything you can basically imagine that would be creative work. Um, it's hard to get in though, because they are most, most of the businesses I worked for were government controlled and it's really hard to get in there if you're, if you don't have a, a lot of background in the business anyway, which I didn't. So I, I worked in other jobs to earn my money and as a hobby, always tried to go into media. And then at one point I thought, why not start a YouTube channel? Because I watched Tim Dodd and, uh, um, Scott Manley and and Joe Scott, if you know the guy, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, of my, our favorites, one very good. Of my big idols. I had the chance to talk to him before as well. He's a really cool guy, and so I got the idea of doing my own YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and that kind of went through the roof. Um, if somebody would have told me two and a half years ago that I would be sitting here today with oh. so many subscribers and so much recognition, it's a humbling feeling, and. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I never want to do anything else anymore. <laughs> and so I keep working on it. And uh, yeah, that's how it all came to be, basically. Because I, I was yeah, always interested in space and always working in media on the side. And so I combined the two, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you, can you recall what was your very, very first probably space-related um, memory? Is it Was it Challenger or you kind of were aware, but that, that when it not just literally blew up in you know i mean it's it's a sad event and but but as we yes. know sad events can trigger a lot of interest and a lot of mm -hmm. not interest rather um attention and i think it grabbed yep. a lot of people's attention um it was challenger for me yeah mm -hmm. that's the first one i remember after that of course tons of things because i started to at that early age to really get into it, question what exactly is a rocket and why do they fly to space and so on and so forth. But that was the first, yeah, because I was sitting there seeing all the grown ups mm -hmm. uh, staring at the TV and I didn't really get back then what exactly happened. I just saw the fireball. And so I started questioning what exactly went off there. What, what was that thing going up into the sky? Yes. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. what brought me in. Yes, yes. And uh, when, what, when did you have the first idea? So maybe you have mentioned that two and a half years you have started uh, your channel, right? 
but mm -hmm. when when was the first idea to talk about the space news so uh is, uh, is there any any idea between the starship development events or uh, what was what was the beginning and the okay. idea that uh, um, the channel so the 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 reason why we started the channel my i i have to say we because my wife helped me from the beginning on uh which is amazing and i'm very very glad to have to have such a great wife um the the reason the, was my day job that i earned my money with i was a sales rep in the field uh working with key customers for an international large company so it was a good job i had and i earned decent money but there was no meaning in my life you know mm. do you know that feeling when you really yeah. are questioning why you're actually getting up every morning absolutely so that's yeah. that was the reason why i started the youtube channel because i wanted to change something i wanted to bring these two things that i really do like together and try to see if i can earn money with it so media and space flight and mm -hmm. so i sat around for two or three months and tried to find a niche that where that's something i've said in a tutorial that i did before on how to start a youtube channel um I, I I answered the same question because I get that question a lot. What do you, how do you how do you start? Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. on YouTube. It is finding a niche. Back then, Starship wasn't in development yet, or very very little, and there was no one really producing any content about it. There were mm -hmm. a few that did some content, but the production quality was rather low. And I thought I could do better, and I thought I I could also talk about interesting things uh, related to the topic. So I I quickly ditched into doing things about SpaceX and Starship because I mean. If that works out, uh, it is going to make many things in the business obsolete mm -hmm. on the day it launches. So, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You mentioned the topic already <laughs> in that time. Yeah, you mentioned yeah, it started to be. It was it was at the brink of becoming a public interest back yes, then. Actually, yeah. they they were preparing the Star Hopper. Remember when they put that nose mm -hmm. cone on it that fell off in the wind? <laughs> that that was when I started the YouTube channel. So it was really early on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you mentioned astronomy, and, and obviously I am somebody who comes from amateur astronomy as well, which I love. And it's funny because for me, astronomy was the transition. Uh, just because if I probably if I don't do astronomy, I will never get involved in, in space travel for some reason. It, I, I knew about it, I've seen it around, but I never got that intention. Um, was it similar for you? So astronomy helped with you sort of tuning onto space travel or it was hand in hand or one was stronger than the other and the other one overcame like in my case or what was your story? Yeah, I know. I know that there there is a. I know exactly what you're talking about. There's a big difference between astronomy and actual engineering to build rockets, because mm -hmm. astronomy is normally busy with the results of science missions more than with the actual rocket launch. We're mm -hmm. we're all clapping when James Webb goes up and survives the whole trip, but we're not interested in the rocket. You know, we're interested in the business <laughs> afterwards, and or astronomers are, uh, yes. which which I am now only partly because I don't do much astronomy anymore because of the YouTube channel. It's just so time consuming. And mm -hmm. everybody who owns a telescope knows that it's not just putting it in the garden and starting watching. It, it takes an hour or, or, or two until everything's set up and you do it at night and I have family and kids. And so the time to, to actually set it up is has become rare. Um, but yeah, um, no, for me, it was actually getting into the rockets first. Um, which I did until I was, I'd say, 10 or so. I, okay. I, I accumulated more and more knowledge about rockets. And then I went into astronomy because I found out that I couldn't be an astronaut. Mm -hmm. I realized at a young age that I would never have the guts to do it. You know, it's just yeah. step, actually step into the rocket and fly up there and do all this insanely hard training beforehand. I knew that it would be, a, at least if even if I would try, it would be a slim chance of actually making it. And yeah. so I went into astronomy because then you can just point this magical tube up into the sky and see all this stuff. And that's what amazed me the, the most. I, I also never did that much uh, um, photography, uh, astrophotography. I wasn't really interested in it. I'm, I'm more interested in actually seeing the things with my own eyes mm -hmm. and, and uh, 
sometimes even making my own speculations and then researching online if that actually is true, what I speculated and things like that. So that is similar with what I do with uh, Starships right now. Um, I often have in my episode, which is actually already, a, a di I'm, I'm tracking off here, but that, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, Everything I'm... is important, what you're going to say tonight to us, so please do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, I've never seen What About It as a channel that just pu puts out pictures and says, so this happened and this happened and this happened. If you've seen my episodes before, you know that I always speculate. Mm -hmm. I try to put two things together. I try to, to, to predict what SpaceX is going to do next, and that's that was always the most fun for me to mm -hmm. just, uh, yes. Read in between Try. the lines. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it comes, then you can, uh, you can uh, say that, okay, I was right. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, that's, that's not what it's about either. Um, no, I'm, no. I'm always actually more annoyed if then there's parties yeah. forming up that people follow my theory and others follow yeah. other people's theory i always post it's just a speculation people it's yep. just uh people like to be tribal example, yeah. the, exactly around episode 120 or so i had the water tower uh thing where i thought mm -hmm. that the orbital launch mount was a water tower because mm -hmm. i looked at the facts and i was like there is something very important missing and it's uh it's the flame diverter system they are going to launch a rocket with 7.5 mega newtons of thrust and they don't have a flame diverter never this is going to be a water tower <laughs> that was my idea and then funny enough it wasn't of course <laughs> and then a few weeks after it it was absolutely clear that it would be an orbital launch mount and i was wrong elon even posted that it might have been a mistake to build the thing without a flame diverter. And I was like, see, there you go. I thought it was a water tower. <laughs> <I knew> it. <laughs> and then recently we on episode 195. So last week I speculated that booster five is going to be scrapped. And now we know it is going to be scrapped. So mm -hmm. sometimes I'm right and sometimes yeah. I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but it's more about the, it was the same thing again. It was a theory because they are switching from Raptor V1 to Raptor V2 and yes. Booster 5 is a Raptor V1 and they don't have enough Raptor V1s, so they're going to scrap it. And ta-da! <laughs> they, they, they did a few days after I released the episode, which mm -hmm. was really cool, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seeing them actually do what I thought they would. It's very good to nice. get it right. Up. So because it means yeah. that you, you, you fully understand uh, the, the factors, the parameters, and obviously you try to put the puzzle to the right place. But it's still because we don't see the, you know, SpaceX is holding their cards pretty open, but still close to the chest. So it the means IP that... The is in the tent, exactly. You don't, exactly. Uh, we, we see the stuff that's done, but exactly. we don't see the things that are made. And I'm pretty sure in those tents, there are a few things slumbering in there that we don't have a clue about and that we're going to be very surprised when they take them out the gate. Yes. Yeah, but uh, I we we sometimes or not sometimes, but uh, quite usually say to our um, to our con um, viewers, our other mm -hmm. other viewers that we we can be we can be very lucky, or we are actually very lucky that uh, we can see into this mm -hmm. whole development process. So earlier it wasn't actually possible to see the everyday development things and and making photos yeah. or anything Absolutely. about about the rocket development and and maybe it's our Apollo era we we uh, we usually say also that and even if in the Apollo era uh, in that time the people could not see into so detailed no. detailed mm. with, with so, so big detail uh, and uh, and if we just think about a bit that uh, we can speculate actually and it's all already a very good thing Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you can be wrong, you can be right, but uh, the whole thing that we can actually speculate, and maybe it's the most important that we have infos, we have photos, and and maybe yeah. it's a very good thing. So yeah. we, we are we are very lucky, I guess. Yes, we're very. We can be very happy that SpaceX is so open mm -hmm. at the Kennedy yeah. Space Center. You, it's all restricted, restricted, restricted. Mm -hmm. and, in its security passes IDs to even get close to the interesting things. And in Boca Chica, if you haven't been there yet, go there because you can stand on the other side of the road while they are constructing all this stuff. It's amazing. It's it's a wonderland for anybody who's interested <laughs> in it. That would be some some questions about that. But it it, <laughs> it it's on our bucket list. Before we steer <laughs> right. 
right into Starbase and, and more into um, uh, Starship, I need to stick a little bit with astrophotography or astronomy because my little, you know, I have two sides. One is space travel and one is astrophotography. And this one keeps telling, ask him more, ask him more. <laughs> so, um, you were, so you said you were more like a visual observer. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so you never really got into photography or, or never I, experimented? I took some pictures of the moon. I took some pictures of the moon. But okay. With, and any astrophotographer would say, oh, my God, why did you do this? Because I, I bought uh, uh, one of these brace, uh, what are they called? The, the, uh, a, hol a holding bracket where you can put your smartphone yes, in front of the, the adapter. That's, that's basically all I did. I okay. never did anything with cameras. And uh, these were just... Because I, because somebody was asking me how mm -hmm. the quality of my of my telescope, and is that well, I can, I can take some pictures for you, and they turned out to be lovely moon pictures, uh, nice shots of the Terminator where you can see all the craters and things. So they were lovely pictures, but it was just that. So I never really went into that. No, okay. it was always about uh, seeing it with my own eyes. Okay, I've seen I've seen in your early videos you had a refractor up on the shelf, and now you mm -hmm. have a, a Newtonian. I think yeah. telescope in the background. The, the refractor is still here. Uh, it's sitting right over there. <laughs> uh huh. Could you tell us what 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 did what equipment have you ever used, or what was your mainstream equipment when you were doing astronomy? Now that was the little refractor right mm -hmm. there. Um, uh, that is a six hundred millimeter okay. uh, refractor, small one. Um, that. Uh, always worked fine for mm -hmm. what i wanted to do inside the the solar system but I, anyone who's ever done it knows if you want to go for the deep sky objects you just need more mm -hmm. uh, bigger more expensive equipment absolutely and so i i spent uh 1500 euros on that one over there with everything and uh that uh improved a lot uh, is that a 1500 1500 mm -hmm. 1500 millimeter um uh eight inch F, yeah no i think it's six six, six inch, inch but uh -huh. still uh it does decent pictures uh so it collects enough enough light uh for me to use the hyperion series uh oculars if you know those but yeah. uh hyperion absolutely and they they give you 80 degrees of uh, of field view. of view. Mm -hmm. Field of view, exactly, and that creates exactly what I wanted the most to be. To be, when you look through that and mm -hmm. you look at uh, at uh, a, um, a, an, a bright enough object, um, after a minute or two of observing, you think you float in space watching it from a distance, and that is that is the reason why I do this because it's it's a. Uh, it's for me. It's a way to travel through the universe, basically. Mm -hmm. If I see it with my own eyes, and that's a different thing for me than a picture. That's why I don't do the astrophotography. Uh, photography. Mm -hmm. um, I do have the feeling that I'm closer to it and that I can observe it with my own eyes, and mm -hmm. so that's why I was always more interested in that. It's, I guess, it's uh, an emotional thing for me. Oh, I, totally. I, it really is. Because I think I I don't think you've ever forgotten. Uh, when you saw first time Jupiter or Saturn, or yes. or if you've seen a globular cluster, let's say, or or even Andromeda or yep. Whirlpool Galaxy. I've seen. I went outside of London and with my 10-inch Dobsonian, which I'm using for ISS photography, the mm -hmm. same thing I used to see this this galaxy eating up the other galaxy. And when you start seeing spiral arms. It's just like what <laughs> your brain is just just have some problems to digest what you actually see. <laughs> it turns real. It's the same thing as seeing a picture of the Empire State Building or standing in front of yes. it. Yes, yes. It, it's it, the picture can be as good as it wants to, you know, from the best photographer ever, and it's a, an amazing picture. It still is not going to be as impressive as standing in front of the front door and looking up. Yes, and yeah, that's the same right. with. Sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, this is a very interesting thing that actually you are you are looking into the past. So yes. you can of course you cannot see what is actually right now. So maybe that galaxy you have seen it mm. never exists anymore. Long so long well, ago. For that you need a very good uh, telescope. Yeah, but uh, still, even the objects that you can see with yes. uh, with uh, a telescope like this have at least changed mm. uh, since yeah. since uh, since the picture that you're seeing was created. Exactly. Mm. Yep. Absolutely. We regularly do this in our live streams that when when there is, let's say, a, a, a crewed mission or a, or a cargo mission launched from Cape, 
and coming towards us and just it's just the right time that people can go outside and actually see it themselves we always mm -hmm. like to say that okay guys you need to go out you need to look for it because then it becomes personal it's just I like with even, astronomy i'm sorry i went even one step further you can uh i you can stream pretty well with a mobile phone so mm -hmm. one time when there was a starlink launch and i knew the train and the second stage would pass right over my house basically mm -hmm. I, I, I streamed the launch with, I don't know, six or 7,000 people. And then I switched the camera, put on my lavalier mic, went out into the garden and held the phone up into the sky. And people could, like 15 minutes after the launch, see it go over my house. And everybody was awe-inspired because that turns it into reality. Because not everybody watching these launch streams comes from Cape Canaveral and has just seen the rocket launch. Mm -hmm. No, there's people from everywhere, from India, from Australia, people who've never seen a rocket launch. And yep. by showing them that it actually, in these 15 minutes, traveled over the ocean and now is above my house, makes it real. And exactly. so, yeah, you should exactly. do that when mm. you when you have one of these situations, grab a camera and put the microphone on your on your shirt and go outside with them. They are going to be amazed to see this. Mm -hmm. I've done I've done lunar ISS transits live for our people, you know, our yeah. viewers. And, and it's yeah, it's so cool. It's just yeah, it just grabs they were, people. They were in... stuck, I guess. Absolutely. I, I remember about they were, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. For, especially for people who have never seen it. I, I know so, ma so many people who have never even seen the ISS because they don't look up mm. because they don't know when it arrives. Mm -hmm. As eight weeks ago or so, I was at a friend's birthday party and it was in the backyard and we had a bonfire going and, and it was a really cool party. And I got a push notification from my ISS app uh, that's permanently running on my it's phone telling me when the ISS is going to be here. <laughs> and I was like, okay, guys, so this is perfect. The sun has just set. And so the ISS is still going to be fully lit while we already have a dark sky. Please do look up now. And everybody stared up and they saw this really, really, it was a perfect viewing condition. You know, it was the, 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 the sunlight was still going over the globe, lighting the ISS fully, yep. but we That's already had night. So that was perfect. And I knew that before because mm -hmm. I've seen the ISS many times and I was like, this is going to be good. And everybody looked up and they were like, what is this thing? <laughs> and I was like, That's the ISS. And I was like, no way. That's, it's just because people don't, it, they, it's probably passed over their heads a hundred times before. Yeah. But they just don't look up. They don't exactly. know what it is. They, they think, oh, wow, that was a bright airplane. Because they... Yeah. yeah. So it's always good to teach. It's yeah. always good to, to get it out there. Exactly. Yeah. It happened to, to me for a lot. I've lived most of my life. So I'm, I'm 40. And, and till I became 30, ISS was non-existent. Right? Yeah. See? So, mm -hmm. and I was like, what? what was i doing what you know we all looking down all the time and i think people just should should look a little bit more up because yeah yes yeah, we're yeah just there's, so there's this there's this t-shirt there's this t-shirt where you can see like 10 people all looking down and one person looking up and inside of the person is there's a galaxy that's a, it's a t-shirt design i really do like it. and i was always <laughs> yeah. that guy that guy with the galaxy inside of him looking up was, yep that was always me you know when i was when when i felt the first time that i'm in tr trouble I'm, I'm, I'm sort of hooked. It's like when I'm with family and I'm walking around and constantly just looking and people are like, well, can you just not keep looking up? What are you doing? What's there? What, what, what? <laughs> That's... So many interesting things. So many. Yep. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, okay. Yes. Um, um, sp may... Space missions, maybe, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted the only question or I asked that uh, if already this whole astronomy team, uh, uh, picture or something came into uh, question maybe the very hot topic nowadays or maybe until friday <laughs> the james webb launch <laughs> so what do you think about what kind of feelings do you have about it so oh. <laughs> i won't be able to watch i'm going to try to do a live stream of course <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be sitting there like this. Oh my God, please don't just don't do anything funny. <laughs> I've, they've worked for what, 25 years on James Webb? I know, yeah. 
far too long and yeah. i do not want to see this thing blow up i really Absolutely. don't it's gone i know scientists who have already time on james webb so uh, who are so involved into the project that they are already on the list of people who will be able to get time with the james webb space telescope and mm -hmm. To see if if it would blow up, I would see them cry so much. It's it's it's. Uh, we could even rebuild it. It's no problem now. We know how to build it, but it would take so much time again. Mm. And so um, I'm really hoping I've got all everything crossed. I can possibly cross that mm. there is not going to be any problems. That the Ariane rocket is just going to deliver, and we can see it deploy. It's good. the deployment phase is going to be as crazy as the launch, basically, because if anything goes wrong there, we have the same problem again because you can't service it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I've had so many people ask me, why don't you just then send somebody up to like with Hubble, they did that. Yeah, but Hubble was in the low Earth orbit. And uh, James Webb is going to be at a Lagrange point. So Slightly there further. Is no, or so. There is no way we can service it. So everything yeah. has to go right. And I'm really crossing my fingers so that everything goes right. Because yeah. James Webb is going to be legendary when mm -hmm. once it starts yeah. um, observing things. It's going to change the way we, we view the universe. It's going to give us so many new insights that we don't even know about yet. Yeah. There are plenty of things that we're planning to do with it, but you always know how it is when you have a better instrument, you point it at something and you get something back that you would have never expected. And that's exactly. what it's about. So yeah, maybe the telescope is already a legend, not only because <laughs> it has never not, nothing uh, observed <laughs> yet, but in, because of its history. So yeah. yes, it has been so, so many problems and, and issues coming up. Uh, but maybe we are now in the last uh, week. Uh, before the launch, so we are looking forward to <laughs> to to see it launch as well, and maybe it will be or not, maybe, but hopefully it will be a big Christmas uh, present for it all of us. Awesome. <laughs> it would be awesome. So, yeah. So we just call yeah. it the SLS rocket of the space uh, <laughs> telescopes. <laughs> yeah, kind of. It's kind of. way over budget, and it took m much too long, but. Uh... In the end, there is nobody else who would build these kinds of things. So that's the one way we have to build a James Webb Space Telescope right now. There yeah. is no private company. You can't go to SpaceX and tell them to build a space telescope because they don't know anything about mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So that's the one way we have. Mm -hmm. We're just, I think we're spoiled since, since SpaceX started to revolutionize the rocket market. We do automatically think that these things could be revolutionized as well. And they probably could, but you need somebody to step up and say, okay, so now I'm going to build a James Webb Space Telescope that's as, that's three times as good, takes half a year to build, and costs two million dollars. Mm -hmm. It's probably possible, but you first need to know, need to have the company that does it. Absolutely, and we don't. So that's the one way to go. One day, so, maybe. <laughs> let's hope that this is a market or a or a, a sector that will be open up once Starship is online, because I think is the so first you have you should have the the, the, the vehicle that's capable of transporting that large and heavy payload exactly and then you can you can see all these projects coming together and and probably Hopefully. people planning um, you can always you can also think that uh, right now what what's the total weight of the James Webb Space Telescope I don't know from the top of my head does anybody you six point two tons all right about um, more, more a bit more than six six tons. Okay, so and that took what twenty years to build. <laughs> yeah. So imagine are you, are you going to break him down? How many how many years per ton? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if we would if we would now extrapolate that towards a payload capacity of let's say at least fifty tons for a starship. Yeah, yeah. that's going it's... to be what a hundred years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Let's not go down to that route. It can't be. <laughs> Hopefully not, no. <laughs> um, watching, you mentioned you're going to be watching James Webb launch like, uh, okay, so yes. I, I steered myself in a couple of weeks to your channel, to your older content. And mm -hmm. since we covered all, almost all the Starship launches, the second stage, uh, low altitude, sorry, high altitude mm -hmm. uh, tests, I was yeah. your I was your SN8 launch. 
Because I think that was a watershed moment for everybody. I mean, just to tell you in advance, I totally lost it. Okay, so yes, I was screaming. Same, same here. It was insane. <laughs> I didn't know I can, I can, I can be excited on such a high pitch note, the uh, tone like I did. Um, I totally lost it. Um, what was your point of view? How did you went through that experience? Because that was one of its kind. Let's be frank. Yeah. Um... I think the craziest moment I had on that flight was when it actually started to stop midair, basically coast for a moment, yes. and then turn over and fall through the sky. That was a, 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 um, a sci-fi moment for me. I, I, I really, I stared at the screen, I remember it vividly, not believing what I'm seeing there. Yeah. Because I, I mean, everybody knew what they wanted to do, but actually seeing it happen and actually also working, serial number eight was an extremely successful prototype launch. Even though the day later, the media uh, said that uh, Musk's Mars rocket exploded. Um, yeah. That wasn't, that was just the last step of the flight. Everything mm -hmm. before that worked out yep. on the first try. And that's what amazed me the most. I was. And then came the, the and then it went closer to the pad, and I I remember just jumping up and screaming, "There's the pad!" <laughs> and then, oh yeah, it was it was pretty good. <laughs> I think it it's because good. it is the first one. I mean, we streamed all the others, you know, ending, you know, closing with SN15 in here. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, the still the excitement because because you want to land, okay, but to to to. <laughs> to cross all those, you know, checklists mm -hmm. with yeah. SN8 and it nearly lands. It's just, it's just the fault of On one Raptor time. engine. Yes. Yep. We were yeah, like, no, time. this is just, what? I can't believe my eyes, what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. This is unreal. Just also think. because uh, I, I didn't, at least I did not expect SpaceX to turn off Raptor engines. I was uh, about to ask you about that. Yeah. I didn't expect them to do that. Afterwards, it's perfectly uh, logical. But in that moment, I thought, oh, God, engine failure. Well, oh, God. my God, a second yeah. engine fa failure. And then I was like, hmm, <laughs> are these really engine failures? No, they're not, because they couldn't throttle the, the test prototype engines that far down. Uh, but still. Yeah, I was shocked when the first Raptor engine turned off. I was like, no, 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 <laughs> don't turn off. What are you doing? <laughs> Please don't, turn it back, turn it back. We have to go further. It's funny yeah. because we had exactly the same experience, Dave, didn't it? Yeah. Didn't we? Yeah. I can remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking back, it was. And, it, uh, you could see that they parked it. Yeah, the exactly. They, they even moved it, it out of the way. Actually. It was, uh, it was, it was uh, and it was, it was totally insane that how can be so confidential uh, control itself for the first time. So mm -hmm. it have, it have been never before such a experience and they just do, did it well, <laughs> for the first time. They have had uh, a lot of knowledge they could transfer over from the Falcon 9 boosters yeah. um, because they've done similar things. I mean, they haven't made them do somersaults in the air, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, everything else, basically. And it's the same thing with the super heavy booster right now. There's this debate going on that Booster 5 is now likely scrapped and people are asking themselves, why not launch it and get some data? It's because most of the things they are doing with that booster, they already know from the Falcon program. They know how to get it up there and then what kind of forces will work on it while it re-enters and so on and so forth. They just need the data on 33 Raptor engines running at the same time. And mm -hmm. for that, they need the V2 Raptor. So, and that's a, it's a bit similar with the, with the Starship. So a lot of the things they did that day, they already knew how to do. Mm -hmm. um, so... That's something I always tell people when they say, D they, this is never going to work. This, I mean, look <laughs> at these rockets. That's just never going to work. They are welding them there in the backyard and, and, and at the same time saying that one day it's going to fly to Mars. Um, that's the same guys who built the Crew Dragon. Yeah. So they know what they're yeah. doing. They, they, if, and if they build it this way, there must be some sort of idea behind it. And obviously, serial number eight uh, shut off a lot of doubters back then. That was amazing. Not enough. Except, not, except not the media. Exactly. I was well, they, they will always try to get their buck. That's yeah. what they're. That's what they're after. In Hungary, we had headlines like uh, Musk's uh, Starship on the way to the moon blew up. 
<laughs> oh, right. That was, that was, that was <laughs> the best, best title. What? What did we miss? Everybody died. <laughs> yeah, yes. everybody died. <laughs> All the bacteria <laughs> died on board. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so it's... Well, yeah. But the, it, 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 it's it's also a Musk, he's polar, polarizing, and I always yep. have the feeling that there are plenty of people on this planet who would love to see him fail. Mm -hmm. So they like a news that says he fails. Mm. So that's why media puts out the, these these headlines. It's because, Absolutely. because oh, ah, look, he fails. Great. <laughs> and let's be frank, it wouldn't be trendy. People wouldn't click on it. But sadly, a lot of people just like negative news over positive news. Yeah. It's, that's yeah. how we work. And, you know, it's, if there's no the demand. It has more clickbait things, so. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, sadly. Right. Starbase. Felix, please tell us what is it to be like there. I mean, I've I watched your live stream, but I mean, I know you, you. I know you. You can try to tell. It's not the same. Like if you are there. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to try. It's emotional. Um, imagine now that you know what Apollo did back then mm. you would have the chance to go to to the to the pad of of Apollo 11 the morning before it launched that's what starbase feels like mm -hmm. because i have quite the confidence in this in the spacex team because of the things they've done before nobody is 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 landing orbital rocket boosters by now and they've done a far better job with the with the uh, crew dragon compared to to the starliner to the boeing starliner nobody can deny, deny that anymore so they 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 have a good track record so i do think that they can actually pull this off and that's the feeling i have when i go to starbase every time i have the feeling that this is the the, the pad 39a just the morning before they launch to the moon that's what it feels like because if if it actually works out this is the place where we develop the starship madness wow. that's what it feels like exactly it's, it, it, it's got this really strange because it's also situ situated in in nature there is nothing around it there's a beach there's dunes there's lots of wildlife around it coyotes birds all sorts of things and in the middle of that these crazy people are building something that could actually get us to mars and not just to plant a flag and scoop up some dirt yep. but to actually build a colony that would be even crazier to the moon and so on and so forth it feels it feels crazy. <laughs> Maybe you really... cannot explain. We just we just have to experience by ourselves. Yeah, that's what I always say. Every chance I get is if you have the chance to go there, do mm -hmm. it now. Do it before they st maybe lock down Highway Four. You yeah. never know how long we'll have this access to Starbase. It might be that at some point people overstep the boundaries, and SpaceX says, "Okay, so this, this is enough. We're yep. we're going to have heavy security from now on, mm -hmm. and nobody's going to see mm -hmm. anything." Mm -hmm. So if you have the chance, it's not that expensive per person. It's I don't so it's there and back again it's under a thousand euros for the flight mm -hmm. and uh motels in 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 uh, uh brownsville are dirt cheap <laughs> if you if you travel on a low budget mm -hmm. travel we will it's it's, it's <laughs> really a, really worth yeah, it it's it's in our on our uh bucket list. list absolutely oh, go 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 absolutely. whenever you get the chance mm -hmm. just make the trip be crazy step into the plane and go there it's, yep. you're going to enjoy it Mm -hmm. There's pe and every time I go there too, there's people from all over the planet. Yes. Um, I was about course, to ask the, the about the community. What is it like? What's the vibe of the people? Because I know a lot of people streaming. A lot of people just walk by, pass by. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you well, talked. So I, I, in the the first time I went there, my channel wasn't that big, so nobody really recognized me. A few people did, mm -hmm. but that was basically it. But when have you uh, been there so the first time? Sorry. That was March last year, just before mm -hmm. COVID. When they first had the first, I remember sitting in the motel room laughing about the people being afraid of this strange uh, disease from mm -hmm. from from China because I honestly did never think it would be that it would yeah. become that crazy. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, so no, not March of not last year, March 2020. Um, so right before COVID started, mm -hmm. and. Um, so back then it was the same as now but now what's changed is that the channel got so big that basically when i walk down the highway four there's lots of people <laughs> recognizing me by now lots of fingers <laughs> yeah so that's fun but it also 
it, it's fun, but it also changes the way people approach you. They, yes. they, they don't stand there being amazed at the starship. When they see me, they normally turn around and be like, hey, can I get an autograph? So I, it, it, the first, but the first trip I did, that wasn't the case yet. And I would, I would describe people the same way I just described the feelings mm -hmm. I had. Mm -hmm. Most people stand there and stare. Mm -hmm. I because I heard you so saying that do not cross the road, do not do this, do not no. do that, respect that it's private property. Mm. And in America, just because there is no gate, it doesn't mean you can walk in. Nope. You could, though. It's so tempting. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit more, just one more step, just yeah, one more Just step. run quickly, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you would probably even get there. <laughs> no, uh, you, know, you should never do that. I, I made that joke on the last live stream. I was like, look at this. I pr pointed the camera down towards the road mm -hmm. and then back up again. There's, there was, there's no fence between you and the starship. Yes. And to keep it that way, you yes. should better not cross the road. Exactly. But people yeah. do respect that, don't they? Most of the time they do, yeah. We've okay, had so a few... We've had a few incidents for with that YouTuber who went right next to, to uh, I think it was SN15 back then on the suborbital pad. He just walked yeah. under it, mm -hmm. recorded and stuff. And so, yeah. And he it was happened. arrested then. <laughs> it was I guess good so. Because he can't possibly have missed that that's private property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just he said that afterwards. He said that he didn't know. I mean, I, I, they're they're building a rocket there, dude. Yeah. You didn't recognize that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think there is a rocket saying factory. that just not knowing the law, it doesn't mean you're exempt by the law. You know, it's your fault yeah. that you don't know what's the situation down there. So, yep. yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. And how was the farm? Because you've been at on the, um, I, sorry for the night, I, I forgot the name. There was a, this beautiful farmer guy is running. That's where you, Jessica Kirish was there. Rock, yeah. Rocket Ranch. Rocket it's Ranch, that's it. Place. I would always recommend that to anybody who wants to go down there. If you do, book your trip, make mm -hmm. sure to, 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 to go to Rocket Ranch because it's a, it's a, it's a special place. It's made by fans, by Starship fans, and it's made actually pretty properly. They, they have a very nice, uh, um, viewing outpost. Uh, they have a boat on the Rio Grande where you can do a tour. Um, they are right next to Starbase. It's mm -hmm. the closest you can you can get to. Uh, from from um, from Brownsville, you drive 30, 40, 40 minutes maybe all the way to Starbase. From Rocket Ranch, you drive five minutes. Oh wow! So hmm. that is right next to it, and uh, that's what makes the place very special. And, wow. Uh, so yeah, we had uh, a Thanksgiving dinner there with lots of fans, and uh, Jessica Kirsch was there. Um, uh, uh, Dean Wiggum was there, mm -hmm. the guy who is building the the the, the Mechazilla Tower right now. Very talented. Tons of fans. It was it was really really cool. It's wow. a special place. I will definitely return wow. um, back there next time I'm there. Wow. Absolutely. Wow, it's fantastic. Yeah, we are we are planning it also, but only maybe in 2022 summer. Mm -hmm. We'll see because uh, we have a bit bigger plan. Um, we want to do a so road trip. I, yeah, actually, like, a road like trip. A so road road trip movie, to be fair. Yeah, in Hungary. So there will be there will be this uh, psyche mission in August, mm -hmm. uh, as far as it seems to be. With the Falco and heavy? with the Falco <laughs> heavy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that will that that would be our first uh, stop. And yeah. then we we would move uh, on on the starbase as well if if we are once in the USA, yes. but yeah maybe maybe lots of things can change mm. until that. But hopefully we will have the chance to to uh, to travel into the USA. But yeah now nowadays it's a bit 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 more difficult task to travel on the other side of the world. But let's see. So that's our bigger it's plan. It's doable. But I just went there. It's doable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Just always wear your mask <laughs> and wash your hands, as we all know by now. It won't and be a problem. Just please let, let, let us on the starbase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. How do you how do you match what you do with family life? I know you are you are you are um, gifted because Stephanie's heavily into yes. this as well. So that's I guess it's a massive blessing for you i mean imagine if your other half is not really interested about it at all no yeah that helps a lot yes um and then as a youtuber if you do that full time and you really don't have in, have any daytime job anymore which i did all the way in the beginning i quit my job and said i'm going to become a youtuber everybody mm -hmm. said 
you're totally crazy. That is going to go down the drain. You can never do this. You cannot, you cannot earn money by uploading videos to YouTube. And I was like, ah, I'll try. And, and uh, it worked. Uh, in the beginning, it wasn't much, but after half a year, uh, and it shouldn't have taken longer than that, after half a year, it, it basically carried the family, which mm -hmm. is amazing. And I'm very, very lucky that that worked. And one of the reasons why it worked is Steffi, uh, my wife. She's, she helped me immensely. Mm -hmm. From the beginning on, she said, don't listen to those people say, uh, you're not going to do this. Try it, give your best, and see if it works. And that's what we both did. And uh, then as a YouTuber, you work from home. So I can see, I see my family, honestly, I see them more mm -hmm. than on my job before, even though I work more hours mm -hmm. now. I, I, get, I normally average at, at around 50, maybe 60 hours a week with the YouTube channel, and I averaged at 45 hours maybe on the old job. Okay. Still, still I, I saw my family less because when I came back home from work, I still had stuff to do. So I went right into the office and stayed there until 10 and so on and so forth. It was harder to, to, to actually free up some time for the family right now. Uh, the perfect example is the Friday episode. It's mm -hmm. just that I worked so much in the last two weeks and didn't see the family that I said, all right, I'm going to drop the Friday episode so that we can spend time together. I could have mm -hmm. never done this yeah. on my, my boss would have killed me if I would have said, dude, I'm going to drop the Friday. Don't bother, come back. Day. Don't bother, come back. <laughs> <laughs> so it, uh, it actually works pretty good. It's it's I'm amazed. Yeah. Even though it's a lot of work hours, it's still it's still very much possible to see the mm -hmm. family. I'm sure now that that your channel is is really became a, a success story, basically, because there's only few of you who's who's regularly talk about Starbase development, Starship build development. Um, do you sometimes take your time and just, just just to stop and think about, wow, you were lucky. Yeah, I mean, you worked hard for this. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean lucky no. that you were just at the right place yeah, no, at the no, right time. Yeah. Yes, I do every day. Every day, literally, it's an it's an honor to be such a part of the spaceflight community. As wherever I can, I try to connect people. I I I give a lot of support for. I mean, this interview is the perfect example. I always take the time. I a week ago, I did an interview with Orbital Plausch. That's a German channel. Mm -hmm. it, it has 170 subscribers. <laughs> and I, I, I still did the interview with him because I like the guy and he went, he came to our meetup and he said, hey, he was not afraid to approach me and ask me for an interview. And I said, yes, and I stand by it. And I do lots of Patreon ship, for example. I have my own Patreon, mm -hmm. but I am also a Patreon supporter of 10, 12, 15 yep. different projects, space, space related, yes. that I give monthly money because I think that it's good, well invested money because mm -hmm. it's people who do awesome stuff and I know how how difficult it is to fund things in the beginning. Like I said, that half year was nail biting because I didn't yep. have a day job anymore and I was eating on my saved money. Yep. And uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to add. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, we can, we can imagine, yeah. I think so it's we are, we, just, we are just, on, just one line. Oh, okay. is, is, sure. is just the fact that, you know, that I've seen at the beginning uh, quite a few people uh, try to do you know, what you or Marcus is doing. And I'm really glad that the really friendly, really open-minded people remained. Because I've seen some of, some, some of the people in the past, they were not, they didn't care about much about the community or they just wanted to grow, 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 grow. Like that's your only drive to grow. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it's wrong. I think people should do it because you love at first place and then the rest will follow. I guess. Yeah, but that's always normally, with few exceptions, that's how it works. If you if you look at Tim Dodd, if you look at Scott Manley, if you look at Joe Scott, if you look at a Mark Rober or, or a Mr. Beast even, you see that these people like what they're doing. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. And otherwise, they wouldn't be so good at it either. So it's always, it shines if you, if you, if you're passionate about what you're doing, people will notice. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's another advice I always give to, to people when they approach me and ask me how you did it or how should I do it? I always say, be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Try to do your own thing. Don't try to copy somebody because because that's there's already somebody who's really good at that. So why should you copy him? Try to do your own thing uh, and then people will notice. And that's how it works. I, I think so, too. Yep. Totally agree. Yeah, that, actually, that's that's uh, what we have, what we try 
every day and all the day maybe so we are maybe uh, we are hopefully on the on the right way but we are not in the position that uh, we could uh, give up our uh, job because uh, yeah we we cannot earn so much money uh, from youtubing or because we have also the spacejunkie.hu website and um, actually we we got a, a quite of money from that but we are not in the position to to make it full time we we would like to make it very hard to to make it uh full time because even that even with that we could share even more people these mm -hmm. contents mm -hmm. and in mm -hmm. hungary uh actually if i can say that we are the only ones who who are making these kind of uh, live streams uh, this kind of contents and um, and that's why actually that's that's why it's good that you have mentioned Felix that uh, try not to copy some mm -hmm. something or somebody because uh, as we are we are the first ones in in our small country um, we we would like to think that uh, our goal is okay and mm -hmm. our our uh, maybe our plans are okay and we have to just wait just wait <laughs> for the for the right position to give our give up our positions or give up our jobs and make it full time Let's youtube see. is a marathon not a sprint yeah. oh absolutely yeah. absolutely so any content yeah. creator knows that uh, i'm always smiling when i hear when i see the occasional comment from from somebody saying it can't be that hard to release a video <laughs> twice a week you always have these people because they just watch them and they don't know how much work is involved in a what about it episode at the yep. pr production quality we have right now combined on everybody i'd say it's 120 hours of work in each episode wow. and that twice a week wow. it doesn't all come from me of course but over the team i'd say it's 120 hours of work until it's out absolutely nice absolutely it's a hard work i think <laughs> i think it's it's the educational side that drives all of us who's in this yes. we are absolutely. doing content because I think we all feel space travel is beautiful. It's a passion. It is like all technology in, in human history. It's changing our life, the way we see ourselves, our planet. You know, we, we've even translated um, um, no, Shatner, William Shatner's space jump mm -hmm. because the words he just said after, afterwards, it makes you emotional. I was watching it live and I was like, what? This is just blowing me away right now. Because those beautiful words from a from an, an everyday guy. Okay, he's a known actor, but he's not involved in this. And no. you, yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and we want more people feeling this way. Yeah, every time I get a message uh, from somebody from from the community approaching me, and it happens fairly often by now, that is the the most precious thing to happen to me is when somebody writes, "I got into." Uh, um, engineering. I got into uh, uh, astronomy. I got into space by watching your channel. Mm -hmm. I've had a few students actually. You said I didn't know what I would, I what I wanted to study, and so uh, uh, I, I looked around. And when I watched your channel, I decided to go into engineering, into STEM, into into developing rockets, into into building satellites and things like that. That is the the biggest reward that that I can get for 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 my channel. And I guess it's the same for you guys. Absolutely. 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 Yep. And especially younger, the better, because you mm -hmm. can influence somebody's life career, which way is it yeah. going to die, you know, uh, continue. And, and, and yes, just because somebody was born in, in a relatively small country, which has almost zero to none uh, space sort of technology, apart from satellite uh, systems. Yes, you can still get involved. You can still work for ESA. You can you can do some heavy lifting and contributing to the bigger picture. If you start early, exactly. If you have the right set of talents and the right set of interest, you just got to start early. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you want to be really good, there is it's hard if when you're once you're past forty or something to start building rockets. I mean, Elon does it, but uh, <laughs> he's an exception. <laughs> I He's guess. a different category, yeah, absolutely. Even he started earlier than 40. Even he started earlier than 40. So, yeah. That's yeah, true. get them involved. Get them involved. There there are these people in Hungary the same way they are everywhere around the planet. So that yep. uh, is, yeah. Yep. 
And actually, so, how is the situation in Germany? So how wide spread this whole space industry uh, and this this type of topics? So what what is the situation in your country? Are Germans well, interested in space? Yeah. Yes, I'd say in general they are, but most of them don't really know anything about it. So mm -hmm. they've many have heard of Elon Musk's Mars rocket that he's building right now, but that's basically it. They normally don't even know what it looks like when you show them a picture and you're like, this is the rocket. And they're like, oh, that looks funny because they've never seen it before. With the flaps, it's always the same reaction. That looks kind of goofy. How is that going to work? <laughs> yeah, it's not just a normal rocket. It's It actually is more of a, of a spaceship than a rocket. The second stage is... is well, yeah, you know. Absolutely. Um, and then we have uh, the Rocket Factory Augsburg. We have ESA Aerospace. We have, uh, of course, ESA with uh, their um, ESOC, um, the, the the operations center. The ESA yes. operations is in Darmstadt and so on. And so in, in Cologne, we have uh, um, astronaut uh, training center and mm -hmm. plenty of things. And then if you go, and Europe is unified. I mean, you know it. You know it. Uh, so it's not just Germany. It's also then in mm -hmm. the Netherlands and in France and so on they are all interconnected and I've been to many of these places before as well mm -hmm. and uh, so there is a, a, a thriving small industry I'd say of of uh, private companies trying to achieve something yes and of course the government side but the government side is sleepy in Europe I would say yep um, they really need to wake up they yep. really need to go new ways Ariane as it is right now is in my opinion it's a relic uh, it's a beautiful relic and it works fine and everything's good. Uh, if you, if we're not, if we don't talk about Vega, um, everything's fine. Um, but it still is a, a non-reusable rocket, yep. and it's it, it, to me these kinds of rockets by now look like Stone Age because yep. it's proven time and time again by now that reusable is the way to go. There is no wor no uh, solid argument against it anymore. Mm. And so they should just start developing in that direction, which the private companies do. Mm -hmm. So why I, I always have the questions question, why can these private companies easily decide to mm -hmm. do the right thing? And the big ones always clinge to the old stuff. I guess it's the size of the ship they need to turn around sometimes. And uh, mm -hmm. and if you turn around a big tanker very slowly, uh, that's the only way you can steer it. I guess that's that's you know also heritage i find heritage or history previous history uh, a hold back because sometimes you know if if you are new and you can say okay clean sheet let's start from scratch no restrictions no previous um you know compromises that you need to push yourself into then probably you can come up with something revolutionary which rocket lab which spacex astra um, all the new, new companies, they are absolutely brilliant. Yeah, they are. And they come up with more and more brilliant ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, but still, I mean, if you, if you, the, the people working at Ariane Space building the Ariane rockets are obviously people who are involved into space business, mm -hmm. into the space business. Right. And so they should at least, I mean, how can you not see that this is the way to go? Yeah. That's the question I yeah. have. I, I know yeah. it's a big ship and th there's always this analogy with a ship that needs to turn and, and I get it. Mm -hmm. But if it's a, what's the difference between a small ship full of people who know what, they're, what they want to do compared to a big ship full of people who should mm -hmm. know what they want to do? I mean, they yeah. are, they, these are aerospace engineers and they should know that that's the way to go. I mean, it's instantly you look at it and you know... That's the way to go. <laughs> so why are there so many people at, at Ariane Spass who still think, nah, maybe next year? <laughs> You'll I, see. I think I, so I used to be a minicab driver in London, a taxi driver for, wow. for years. And I, and, and I used to talk a lot of people. And sometimes um, I see people just don't give a chance for a mega company to come down. And I always say this, that... Are you? F do you know Kodak Eastman? Mm -hmm, yeah. Who doesn't? And, who, and, anybody and, who's interested in 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 in, in economics. Exactly. Knows them. Where are they? They are nowhere. 
And and there was a point when people just said, just like Apple today or or SpaceX or Nokia. today, exactly, exa- Nokia, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. How this is impossible that these gonna these companies gonna become obsolete, and it does become reality because this, mm-hmm. if if they don't recognize it, I think the market will sort it out. And I don't want ease or go. I want them to create reusable rockets because I think Europe needs. Yeah. A strong it space. Would, I was about to say it would be really bad if ESA uh, would. They do it actually, but it it will be a bit. Yeah, uh, Callisto, Themis, twenty thirty. They are way way out. These projects are way out. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I meant with let's do that next year. Because <laughs> they are they are planning things, but it's so slow and, yes. and little effort and. Yeah, very slow. Yes, yes. First Ariane six. Yes, yes. Yeah. We want to see it. That's the European Having, SLS. We have a question related to this. Uh, on right. under developing, so so rockets that which are under development at the moment. Which one are you looking for the most? Uh, is there any favorite? I mean, apart from Starship, obviously. <laughs> well, d- d- since the announcement, definitely Neutron Rocket Labs Neutron, Neutron looks uh-huh. looks awesome. But if I would have to choose. Not by likeliness of actually making it, you know, because you normally, you if when you're doing this for a living, you you, you can at least tell if a company has a really good chance or a 50-50 of mm-hmm. actually achieving what they want to do. If that would totally not count, it would be relativity space with uh, Terran R. Uh, that thing, okay. when I saw the uh-huh. announcement, I was like, oh, wow, that's a sexy rocket. And with rockets, <laughs> for me, it just comes down to, uh, of course, is it feasible? Yeah. Uh, is it a business idea? Because that is really important for these small companies, and mm-hmm. I think it is. Mm-hmm. And then secondly, of course, it, does it look cool? Yeah. For me, that definitely is part of the fun of seeing a rocket launch. That's one of the reasons why I love Soyuz launches, for example, yeah. because it's the most beautiful rocket, in my opinion, that's ever been built. That thing is just amazing to see launch with the Koreliev cross and everything. It's it's just beautiful. Yeah. And I think Terran R is going to be the same. It looks like the cooler little brother of the Starship. Okay. Yeah. And we now, see. Well, once, <laughs> once we are talking about rockets, uh, if you would have the chance, would you go up in, to the space? And if yes, then with which which of the rockets? So let's say rockets. somebody would approach you and say, would you like to come to our company yes. and jump? Okay, <laughs> no more questions. <laughs> yes, you, you don't have to ask me that for long. Yeah, I would instantly say yes. You said um, that you Mar- want to Mars, to I don't know. To Mars, I don't know because I have family and it's, no. it takes five years to be back and so on and so forth. But just to space or even to the moon instantly yes okay and uh definitely spacex with the with the crew dragon because it is the yeah. most comfortable it is a very safe ride it's the most modern version to to ride into space you can actually see something mm. if you're sitting in a soyuz uh, it, there's like this really small window and you have to be the lucky guy next to the window yep. otherwise you don't see anything and so it, for me it would be experiencing it so it would be something like in, inspiration four with the cupola mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. that's what i would it was like very, very, very uh, yeah <laughs> amazing <laughs> if somebody yeah. would ask me for if i want to have a seat on the next inspiration launch <laughs> probably do it <laughs> do you do you feel like physically you are ready or you would make yourself ready oh yes 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 yeah uh, dear moon we had this dear moon announcement yes. a while back and i did a uh, 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 file for it so i entered the competition i made the video and i already started doing cardio training for it so i would just do that if somebody would approach me with in half a year, we're going to have a rocket launch and you're going to be sitting on it. You can bet that I would be running around my ho- house all day long to, to just get the cardio up as much as I can. So nobody can say anything when, when they test me. So I was like, oh, wow, well, for a 41 year old, you're really beefy. Yeah, thank you. I was always like that. You know, <laughs> I would train yeah, the heck like out of crazy. it. Crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Even even for a space jump, I think it's it's such a beautiful thing, and just to see the Earth as it is, even from a hundred kilometers, just above Kármán line, uh, it must beautiful. be life changing. In indeed, yes. indeed. I uh, would I would also just if if it wasn't Inspiration Four, I would also go with uh, Virgin Galactic or with uh, yeah. Blue Origin. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't really if anybody of them sees this and wants to approach me. 
please feel free to do so. <laughs> a bit, a bit advertising now. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Jeff, if you're listening, <laughs> Jeff, if you're listening, you know what to do. <laughs> yep. Awesome. I'm, I'm a bit surprised going back just, just for one second because Matthias Maurer is up there and, and I would yeah. assume that, that, his presence on the ISS at the moment would generate sort of a m much larger interest, just like when Toma was up uh, and he just came back with crew two, I think. Yes. I think f the French were like so on it, I think. Mm -hmm. It depends on the media um, and on people like us, of course, because we're a part of the media. If the yes. big TV stations want it or not, we, we get the views. Um, so it depends on how many people you tell it's the same thing as with the iss in the backyard remember the story from the from the birthday party where mm -hmm. nobody had even seen the iss yet even yeah. though it flew above their head many times before of yeah. course it's just when you don't know you don't look and so that's there we go again that's the reason why i have the the youtube channel why i have what about it and um it's really important for people to know otherwise nobody will look mm -hmm. so yeah no not really in germany um some people do know, but it really isn't big on the news. Yeah. Nobody really talks about it. Mm -hmm. I think we have a lot to do. Yes. Yeah. We have a lot to do in, in general knowledge about space, about astronomy. It's that there are a lot of gaps to fill. Let's, let's agree yeah. on that. Yeah. Now we have, we have just a small sentence for the uh, end. So now if I don't know, Felix, if you have heard about our Hungarian, uh, new plan to to uh send a new um astronaut astronaut to the iss this uh, hunar program and uh, just a small uh, personal to add that uh, i would like to uh be in, in this uh, program so i i will i will give uh i will give uh, to myself the chance and uh, and let's see but if if it would be great <laughs> to to be the f uh, second 100 percent astronaut of hungary that it would be great and maybe it's a it would be a, also a good chance for, for to our channel to have a broadcast live broadcast from the iss because um, yeah. this program oh. contains that uh, with the axiom space we would have a chance to go with a, f a future uh, mission with axiom mm -hmm. space to the iss about 24 or I guess maybe it will be 25 already, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we, now we have the chance. Everybody have has the chance now to to uh, apply to try apply and try try themselves. That okay? How how far can I reach? Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, an everyday people can can do it. And they have they don't have to be a physical sport fan or I don't know with with. Uh, 200 uh, IQ, or I don't know. <laughs> or a fighter so pilot. <laughs> yeah. And that's the so. thing that is really important if you just have a few people you can send up. You have to send the yeah. best of the best of the best of the best. Mm -hmm. But if you, the more, uh, let's hope for Starship. Once that is running, mm -hmm. it's going to be much easier to get to space. Mm. It will be a game changer for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, actually, the very last question for you is, have you not seen the BE4 engines by any chance? Because we are looking <laughs> we are looking for it and we just can't find it. And we were hoping that you have much more information about that. So um, <laughs> let's or hope they will find them. them. Well, I just sent somebody up out there, actually, to take some more pictures of Pad 39A of, of what SpaceX is doing there. Okay. Um, and he took some pictures from me of Blue Origin. Everything's quiet. Everything's very quiet there. Well, <laughs> except the new new <laughs> shepherd. There's this Jarvis. There's this Jarvis test tank that is still sitting on their pad. Yeah. But um, other than that, yeah. there is yeah. not really no engines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I couldn't miss this joke. We always, on a regular basis, making <laughs> these jokes about uh, yeah the engines. Where are my engines? And so on and so forth. Um, <laughs> Felix, thank you very much for for being here and just sharing some of your thoughts with us. I'm sure it will inspire quite a, quite a few of our um, viewers. It was an absolute privilege, seriously. Yes. Please remain as you are now because people, right. the world needs down to earth educators like yourself. It's Thank been you an absolute honor, absolutely. It's been a hopefully, pleasure. Hopefully one day we will meet on Starbase. 
Yes. We will. I mean, <laughs> I'm relocating to Florida uh, rather soon. So right now the timeline is pointing down to February and then I'll be in the mm. United States and I'll be down at Starbase a lot. Shoot me a message uh, when, you, when your plans solidify mm -hmm. and I'll see if I can make it. That would I'd be awesome. Thank you that so would much. be awesome. And we will include you in our road trip movie, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, thank you so much for having me today. It was a blast. Um, to anybody who's watching this, uh, give these people a thumbs, not, thumbs up and a subscription. They, I think they well, des well deserve it. Um, thumbs up. What you're doing is absolutely amazing. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. And we always say go team space. We not part of this or that. You know, we want thrive you know we want human species to thrive so go team space thank go you again space. thank you again take care nagyon szépen köszönjük hogy itt voltatok velünk ezen a csodálatos interjún Félix nagyon jó belelátást adott a munkájába és szerintem mindannyian nagyon örülünk ennek az interjúnak tényleg nagyon szépen köszönjük neki mindenképpen iratkozzatok fel a Vadabádi csatornára ugyanis Járai Szabi készíti az epizódokhoz a magyar feliratot, úgyhogy mindenképpen kövessétek Félix csatornáját. Mi pedig nagyon hálásak vagyunk Félixnek, hogy itt volt velünk, és vette a fáradtságot, hogy beszélt velünk. Köszönjük szépen a figyelmeteket! Sziasztok!